So you've created that shiny new thing and want to 3D print it with Blender. I like to create these fantasy characters for tabletop and there's nothing like the feeling of getting your latest creation off the printer and into your hands. Let's walk through the steps I use to prepare a model so we can get to 3D printing with Blender. So this is the centaur that I've been working on. I'm pretty happy with where he's up to now. I want to prepare him and then print him out. First off, I'm just going to look at the model and see if I can spot any potential issues. So what I'm looking for is how each object overlaps. So you can see they're all separate objects and I want to make sure that there's no obvious holes. So if I take this armor piece, for example, and I just move it away, you can see there's a gap between the objects. We don't want things like that because when we remesh it into a new solid object, then there will be a hole here. And when you're 3D printing, it will be very difficult to support it. So we don't want anything like that. This is quite thin. So I want to make sure that that's going to print okay. I have this one millimeter cube which uh, somebody on the Discord recommended doing, which is quite useful just to make sure of the thickness of something before you print it. I also like to use the measure tool here and then you can quickly check the width of things as well. So this is looking good. Can't see any issues with the overlapping. So we want to hide this base first of all, because we don't want to join that object with this one. So this is the object that we want to merge together. If I press A, I'm able to select all of the objects. And then if I hit the, well, I've got it set to U on my keyboard. I use various different Pi menus to quickly access different parts of Blender. Check out the description for more information on that and downloading it for yourself. And what I should say is if you're not using the Pi menu add-on that I'm using, then you can hit F3 or you can just search for the commands I'm running here. What I want to do is unparent all of these objects. As some of them were parented together so that when I moved objects around, they were grouped up together. And the reason why I'm unparenting is because in the next steps, we're going to join together the objects. And what can happen sometimes is it will cause some of the children to jump around once you try and join them all together at the same time. So now I've unparented them, I need to make them all a single user. And this will convert any linked duplicate objects into unique objects. So again, when joining, we don't run into any issues. Several of these objects, such as the eyes and spear here, they've got modifiers on them. So if we were to just join all of these objects together, the modifiers would disappear and you'd see you'd only have one eye and you'd only have one spear in order to convert them all to a mesh at the same time. You select all the objects again and you run convert to mesh. So now that has changed the spear into just one solid mesh. Now we've prepared all of the objects for joining. We can select all the objects again, sh hold shift and select the chest. And then that will be the object that all the other objects join to. So if we hit control J, and now all the objects are joined together, but you'll notice some of the objects that were mirrored, like this hoof, uh, the normals have been flipped when they're joined together. So that's not a problem because in the next step, we're going to remesh the whole object and these normals will get flipped after the remesh. I'm going to use the voxel remesher here and the most detailed object that was part of this model was at 0.05 voxel size. So we want to remesh the whole object with a lower voxel size. So I think about half of the lowest that we had would be uh, good for this. So if we do 0.025, that will be half of 0.5. And it will mean that we don't lose any of the detail that we've already got on the model. So just hit voxel remesh. Okay. Now that it's finished remeshing, final step is to decimate the model because currently this is very, very detailed mesh. 
technically this file is ready for 3D print. So it will be a watertight manifold mesh. However, you wouldn't want to use this file because it's very, very, it'd be very large in size. So we need to decimate it and this will reduce the poly count and make it more suitable for sharing online and for 3D printing. So if we go to the modifiers area and we add a decimate modifier, you can see that there's a ratio here. We want to change this to less than one. That determines how much it's going to decimate the model by. So I usually, you might want to experiment with what works well for your model, but I find that 0 0.07 gives me a good result. It's quite a small file size, usually about 50 megabytes, but also maintains all of the detail that I need for a 2K printer. So one tip I would recommend is if you have a computer that's not, not that powerful like mine, you want to turn off the real-time display. So when you change that ratio, it doesn't preview it for you and it will take a while if it is quite a dense mesh like this one. So once we've turned that off, you can change the ratio to 0 0.07. Once you've decimated to this level, you can always decimate it more if you find that the file size is too big. So I'm just going to apply that now. Okay, now the model has been decimated. Uh, you'll find that your viewport speeds up considerably. Mine certainly does. You'll want to save this file out as a separate file to your original project file. And that will mean that you can keep all of your original separate objects if you should need them at a later date. So if we open up the end menu at the side and you'll notice I've got a 3D print tab here. And this is an add-on that comes bundled with Blender. So if you don't see the 3D print tab here, then if you go to edit preferences, then go to add-ons and search for 3D, you can see there is 3D print toolbox here and just tick it to enable that. And then you'll see it appear in the menu here. So what I usually, I use the checks here and I just check that the object is solid. So once you hit that, it'll start working out whether the object you have selected is a solid object. So whether it's um, another word for that is whether it's a manifold object or watertight, sometimes it's called. And this just means that the whole object doesn't have any gaps or holes and is one solid shape, which is suitable for 3D printing. So you can see in the result here that there are no non-manifold edges. So everything is combined together. Now we need to export this completed model. So if we go back to the 3D print tab here, and we know that it's a solid object. If you look under export, you can choose the folder that you want to save out the STL file. You can rename the object to a more sensible name. I'm just calling it Centaur Merged. And then if we export that now, so all that's left to do really to print this guy out is to support him. I have a video on the method I use to support characters like this using Chitubox Basic. If you want to check that out, have a look in the description. Hopefully this is giving you a good overview on how you can prepare your own projects for 3D printing. Lately, I got the swamp base that I created here on the channel off the printer too. I used all the steps used in this video to prepare this model. Take a look at the process for creating this base in the description. You can download this model and the Centaur on my Gumroad. Don't forget to check out the Patreon to support the channel, get free models and early video access. A big thanks to everyone who has done so far. Check out their names here. See you all in the next video.